welcome to this week's character coaching session, Outwork. Before we get started, let's check out this week's Kingdom Sports Minute. Two ways to do sports from Coach Ron Brown from the University of Nebraska. There's two ways of doing sports, God's way or man's way. Which will you choose? Perhaps you're a parent. You watch your sons and daughters participate in, in Little League ball or what have you. Um, but do they understand that you can literally glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by the way you do sports? Too many of us Christians arrogantly just assume that if I compare well and we win a lot, that's really what it is. And then we can put God's stamp of approval on it at the end. But Malachi was challenged by God to remind the people of how tiresome it was for him to receive offerings that were not holy before the Lord. They weren't giving him his best stuff. Can you learn how to do your work heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men in the way of sports? Absolutely you can. Daniel Rudiger was born in Joliet, Illinois, as the third child of 14 in his family. He grew up in a lower, lower middle class household in the outskirts of Chicago, where his father worked in a mine to put food on the table every night for Rudy and his siblings. One bright spot in the family's home would appear on the television when Notre Dame kicked off each weekend. Rudy's father loved Irish football as his 15th child. Because of this, Rudy dreamed of not only attending the university someday, but playing football for the Irish. At Joliet Catholic Academy, he was a standout quarterback in both his junior and senior seasons, leading his team in tackles both years. On paper, Rudy's statistics may have been considered a decent recruit for college football programs. However, there was one glaring weakness about the younger brother. Rudy stood only five foot six and weighed 165 pounds soaking wet. While working at his father's plant one afternoon, his best friend, Pete, was killed in an industrial accident. As a result, he decided it was time to act on his dream. Following the advice of Pete, he left his hometown after hearing enough of negativity about his life ambition and began his historic journey through South Bend. After reaching South Bend, Rudy was directed to Holy Cross Junior College, where he enrolled in classes immediately. It was here that he had learned that he had suffered from dyslexia a possible explanation to Rudy's academic struggles. Being a below average student most of his life, he was denied acceptance to Notre Dame for his first three semesters. That time, however, proved to be valuable to Rudy in becoming a true Notre Dame man. Since he couldn't be a part of the actual team, he took a job behind the scenes as a, sta a stadium groundskeeper. During his employment, he was able to walk the field and travel the tunnels of Newt Rockney Stadium, which motivated Rudy even more to make his dream a reality. Living in a spare room in the basketball arena, Rudy was running out of time to enroll at Notre Dame as the university did not accept senior transfers. Knowing this, Rudy sent his application in one last time. This time, he did not fail. After enrolling at Notre Dame, Rudy tried out for a walk-on spot, going up against 15 other students. He was one of the two chosen to prepare the varsity team while serving on the scout team. Making the scout team was the first step to succeeding in Rudy's eyes. The second step involved playing in an actual game. Day in and day out, the pint-sized defender battled displaying the true meaning of heart, passion, and hustle. Thanks to Merv Johnson and his teammates, Rudy was inspired enough to take his proposal to the office of Coach. Coach promised Rudy that he would dress in his final season at Notre Dame. However, he hadn't promised that he would still be in South Bend. He stepped down following the end of the 1974 season. Dan Devine, the former coach of the Green Bay Packers, took over for Parsigian and became Rudy's head coach in his last season, donning the blue and gold. On November 8, 1975, Devine decided that Rudy was going to dress for the first and last time of his football career. On this sunny Saturday afternoon, playing against a powerful Georgia Tech team, Rudy stepped in onto the field of Rockney. While it may not seem like a lot to many, he saw action in two plays. The first, he was stopped and able to get the Yellow Jackets quarterback, Rudy Allen. However, on the second play, Rudy broke through the line of 300 pounders and brought Allen down to the ground for the final play of the game. After an uproar in the crowd and smiles across many faces around the stadium, 
Rudy was lifted onto the shoulder of his teammates and carried off the field. And so Rudy's legacy still lives on today. Two plays, one sack, one dream accomplished. Here's the definition of outwork. Work harder, faster, or longer than someone else. I wanna quickly focus on two things with this definition. Work longer. Of course, time is required of this, but are you willing to dedicate yourself to the longevity of the process to reach your dream? Dreams don't happen overnight. And work harder. You've heard the saying that work, hard work makes the dream work. Anything of value that will have a lasting impact on your life takes work and hard work at best. Friday, as you finish up your regular season against Republic, have the mindset that you will outwork your opponent as you have invested the time it takes to get the win and that your hard work will set your path for a future of success. Good luck Friday.